it's so, it's so, it's so infuriating, bro. I wanted to get my laptop and literally like crush it between my hands like a hydraulic press and then throw it in the tightest spiral you've ever seen at the wall and watch it shatter, bro. Then I wanted to take off my do-rag and shove it up someone's asshole. I swear to God, bro. Just imagine for a second that your girlfriend or boyfriend was quite recently and quite viciously murdered and the police show up to your front door put you in handcuffs and then they take you to the station for questioning now i want you to pause right here real quick what would your genuine reaction be would it be this to the first installment of true crime ASMR on this channel now months ago now I I actually made a poll on my community tab and I was like hey do you guys want to see true crime ASMR and basically the overwhelming result was yes and since then I have not made one true crime video on this channel well obviously tonight that changes crazily enough yeah this case listen i have so much energy right now i'm so amped for this video this is gonna be it's gonna be me and you and we're just gonna sit here and talk about this case right here so get comfortable if you need to get some milk get some milk warm it up in a microwave actually don't warm up in a microwave warm it up in like a stove or something and then drink the milk along with this video this is an asmr video yes but this is going to be so interesting and a lot of these cases that i continue to make will be so interesting that you might not even want to go to sleep you might even be like me and after the video is done go to research the case afterwards but anyway like i was saying i have so much passion about this case i, I go on many monologues and soliloquies by myself in the shower you know when i'm driving i think about this case and i'm like damn what a case in fact what a case to be the first case on this channel now i don't know if you guys have heard about this case i think most of you maybe not most but a few of you have heard about the case but anyway even if you have we're still going to talk about it of course smash the like button though and let's get into this now i genuinely don't know where to start with this case out of all cases this is probably one of my favorite cases one of the strangest cases one of the as i like to call it the perfect ups in terms of a case and how someone ended up getting caught technology plays such a huge role nowadays in well in the past let's say 20 years of how people be getting caught when they be committing crimes bro it's it's absolutely crazy and if you haven't heard this case before you're in for a treat so i guess we're gonna start on the culprit the criminal right we're gonna go into a little backstory on her the title of this video i think is something like the rage of a jealous ex something like that this ex this woman that we're talking about tonight her name is jody aries now if that if that name sent you know shivers down your spine because you know of the name and you've heard of this case before then sit tight because we're going to talk about it but for for even you and anyone else who doesn't know about this woman let's go into a little backstory of her shall we the first thing i'd like to tell you about jody is apparently this is this is in the words of detectives and people who have studied this woman right apparently her childhood was calm of all the interrogation scenes that i've seen of her the, the the court proceedings that i've seen of her the interviews that i've seen of her in my humble opinion and i'm not expert but this woman to me clearly has some sort of a personality disorder 
so I, I, I don't think it was ever mentioned either they just said that her, her childhood was calm like she wasn't abused she wasn't she basically they were saying that her childhood wasn't the reason that she became the monster she she later grew up to be but anyway we move so she she dropped out of high school to pursue a career in photography who does that even sound like that sounds like that sounds like Hitler no he, he wanted to be an artist and he got kicked out of art school then he became you know who he became it's crazy like if he was just better at drawing he might not have done what he'd like life is funny like that <laughs> but anyway let's keep going that's not funny when she was 26 she got a job at a prepaid law firm where she met the unfortunate and poor victim of this case Travis Alexander the the biggest thing about their relationship I guess which pretty much only lasted five months the biggest problem with the relationship was that Jody loved Travis but Travis didn't love Jody like he wasn't in love with Jody so like I said they broke up after only five months but as soon as they did yeah Jody leaves her grandparents house and then she gets an apartment a mere two blocks two blocks away from Travis I I hope that I remember to speak on this later because I don't want to get into it right now right because it's gonna be pretty long and I don't want to like screw up because I want to organize this because I have so many thoughts and I want to organize this so right now we're going through the backstory on Jody okay so just hold that in mind she gets an apartment two blocks away from Travis this guy who doesn't want to be with her this guy who just broke up with her she gets an apartment right next to his house from that moment on she was labeled as the crazy ex by Travis's friends and pretty much anyone that had a a bird's eye view a third party view of their entanglement their situationship it wasn't really a relationship because like I said they broke up right but anyway now look although Travis wanted to be done with Jody he would continue sleeping with her out of pure convenience now that's kind of tough but hey I guess they're both adults right Jody wants it he wants it it's consensual I guess it's cool right wrong I guess because of the newfound proximity that she had to Travis and of course her being obsessed with this guy she begins to show up unannounced to his house sometimes even in the middle of the night and travis would always let her in okay now look this right here is where things start to get spooky and deadly so long story short travis basically gets an opportunity to go on an all paid for work retreat all paid for by his work and he, he could take one person obviously also jody she she, she knew about this and in her head obviously she I don't want to say assumed it was going to be her but I guess in her head she kind of hoped that it would be her obviously that wasn't going to be the case Travis ended up wanting to take a woman by the name of I wrote it down what the fuck is it Mimi Hall right she's the woman that Travis was romantically interested in for for months for a long time but he never actually ended up doing anything with her and in the interrogation part of this video you'll actually see like anyway let's keep going so on june 4th 2006 six days before travis was supposed to set out to mexico with mimi hall jody comes over unannounced the only thing that could be confirmed about that day was that when she came over they had sex right and they took explicit photos of each other with Travis's brand new camera so after they they finish what they're doing at roughly 5 p.m. on June 4th right Travis gets into the shower and Jody is there taking pictures of Travis with his brand new camera and he's doing some some poses you know sometimes he's looking at the camera sometimes he's just doing some poses 
and I think there was a span of like 12 pictures I can't remember how many pictures that they were taken but there was the final picture that was taken and it looks like this I don't know how much I can actually show of it because you know YouTube restrictions but the last picture looked like this right and after this picture was taken Jody stabbed Travis 27 times also she ended up shooting him in the face and slaying his throat yeah now now this is where I say that technology like screws a bunch of criminals over like technology solves a bunch of crimes nowadays especially in 2023 like bro you bring your phone you bring any device to a crime scene you're probably getting caught bro but this is why i say it right so during the attack right two pictures were taken by accident unknowing well technically she knew about it because she ended up trying to delete these pictures but two pictures were taken by accident right one of the pictures looked like this and this was the picture that was taken by accident as she dropped the camera i guess as she was lunging towards travis as he was sitting in the shower this picture was taken by accident and the next picture was actually a picture that i guess when she was dragging his body away from the shower which i don't understand why she was doing this but she was dragging his body away from the shower she ends up kicking the camera and the picture that was accidentally taken was a picture of her foot she was wearing a sock and i guess like um joggers right off-brand joggers a sock a black sock and in the picture you can literally see travis's injured body at that point it could be assumed that the injuries were pretty fatal like he was either dead by that time or he was almost dead now look at this the amount of time between the two accidental pictures was 62 seconds so in 62 seconds like she she stabbed him obviously she might not have stabbed him the complete 27 times and slit his throat and shot him in his face she might not have done that in 62 seconds but the 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 time between the two pictures was 62 seconds and after 62 seconds travis is bleeding profusely and she's dragging him away like she's dragging his body away what happens next is she she deletes the pictures of the camera then she throws the camera inside a washing machine which the washing machine was either upstairs and they were downstairs or the washing machine was downstairs and they were upstairs that is pretty important for the the court proceedings part of the video she tries her best to clean up her dna to act as if she was never there at all and then she dips when i said earlier that i believe jody had some sort of a personality disorder right a lot of it comes from the fact that first of all it's being a psychopath a personality disorder i don't i don't actually know right but jody must have been a psychopath because in order to to prove that she wasn't in arizona at the time because that's where travis lived in order to prove that she wasn't in arizona or at travis's place she ends up leaving travis a voicemail on his phone i don't know if i can play the voicemail in this video it will be very asmr-ish so anyway not only did this sick bitch leave him a a voicemail on his phone she sends him a, a long-winded email and i only I only found out about the email once I started to watch the court proceedings. This bitch is crazy. And then she sends him a text. And the text was like, oh, like, whoop de whoop de whoop, I haven't heard from you, whoop, blah, 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 blah. And the email was mad long-winded. Like, okay, let's, let's continue because I'm going to go on, I'm going to, about to go off, I'm about to go crazy. So while she's leaving him this voicemail, yeah, she actually does like some mad drive, like some weird really long-winded drive all the way to like i think utah then she meets with another guy and then hooks up with him 
and this I guess was to also cover her tracks to basically give herself another alibi right it was super clear to me that Jody, for some reason believed that she was going to get away with this crime and how she was going to get away with it was the way she presented herself I guess she watches a lot of TV but if she presents herself in a certain way she won't get she she won't get blamed for it like regardless of the evidence regardless of the DNA regardless of the footage regardless of pictures it doesn't even matter if I'm behaving like this I'm behaving all naive and I'm behaving all innocent I'm I'm going to beat this case she thinks she's she thinks she's take a actually take it in BSK so that's tough he tried to do the race technically Jody should have did the race but you know what Jody did funnily enough Jody did the opposite of the race Jody I don't want to say she turned herself into the police but when she found out that Travis was deceased even though she knew because she did it but when the news broke she actually offered to give her DNA to the police I guess this was to act innocent. Oh man, if this woman out here is offering to give us her DNA, then she can't have done it because someone guilty wouldn't have done this. And that's how Jody would think. Now that's the story and that's Jody's backstory complete. Let's get to the interrogations. Jody was actually interrogated twice. The first interrogation was actually both of them were pretty, pretty fascinating to watch but at the same time so crazy like it's so sinister it's so crazy how context is everything if you're watching certain things and certain things perspire perspire is that word if you're watching certain things happen under different contexts it would make sense let's say you're watching someone speak about their day in a very calm and joking way and the context was nothing they were just speaking about their day or well, that would be cool right now let's say that this person was speaking about their day in a very calm and joking way and the context is on that day they brutally murdered their entire family then with that context that whole joking thing looks sinister as hell and that's exactly how these interrogations with Jody went so the detective comes in now and this detective knows everything he pretty much knows what's happened she was arrested like what 45 days after his death so the detectives like they had a lot of time to ask people questions and you know recover certain things and go to the house and see what the, the scene was like and basically build a case in which jody was actually the prime suspect so during the interrogation jody's acting very strange and the detective is asking her questions like on on june 4th where were you she's like oh, i was ot i was out of town you know whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. the detective's like so you weren't at travis's place and she's like no i was nowhere near it and and this went on for you know a few a few minutes and then the detective dropped the bombshell in my head this would have been a bombshell if this was me let's say i committed a crime and i was like hey bro i wasn't there and the detective dropped this line what if i could prove that you were there as soon as i heard that i would have been like i'm guilty bro arrest me take me detain me take me i don't even need a trial i'm gonna blow trial i don't even need a trial bro just just I'm, whatever it is i'm gonna plead the fifth i'm gonna plead out whatever it is if you plead 50 years give me that i'm not getting out of this bitch that should have been jody's psyche nope jody decides to carry on with this spiel of no i wasn't there detectives like what if i could show you pictures to prove that you were there she's like nah i wasn't there detective goes out the room he comes back in and he shows her the pictures that she thought that she deleted you know how forensics can can recover deleted pictures deleted text bro this is what i'm saying about technology bro don't commit crimes with technology i'm not endorsing no criminals bro don't even come here with that but 
I'm just saying that if you're gonna commit a crime, you cannot bring no tech with you, bro. All those pictures that she took with Travis as they were fornicating. Forget, forget the shower and the murder just as they were fornicating. All recovered. Time stamped and everything. The perfect disaster. The pictures were time stamped. Time stamped to the millisecond. Okay, not the millisecond, but the second. Which means that this is how they found out that was 62 seconds before those two accidental, between those two accidental pictures. She's like, oh, rah. I guess, I guess, I guess my cover's busted. It wasn't, if it wasn't for you meddling kids, I would have got away with this. Nope. That wasn't Jody at all. She still doubled down. What, did, what if, what if these pictures were taken at a random date? No, 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 they were time stamped. Is, is, does that look like me? Is that girl me? No, no, Jody, it's you. It's like, that's definitely you. The detective also brought forward to her that they found her DNA all over the place. For some reason, they found her blood at the scene, which I guess she must have cut herself, like, with the knife at that point, because her blood was found mixed with Travis's blood, and there was a handprint of blood that was actually found, and the detective literally told her, that it's either you you dipped your hand in blood and then touched the wall or there was blood already on the wall and then you touched it you know what this bitch said she said what if my handprint was already there and then blood like basically splat all over it <sighs> i i hate jody so much and I hate her. This is after seeing a lot of the court proceedings. The court proceedings went on for like 50, 55 days. I hate Jody so much. My blood right now is literally a boiling thinking about them. So to cut a long story short, right? Jody ends up lying about the the incident and says I wasn't there. I think I think that's how the first interrogation ended. Her saying that she wasn't there and then the detective leaves she starts doing some weird stuff like singing and humming this is why i say she had some sort of personality disorder bro because she couldn't even grasp the full gravity of the situation that she was in she couldn't grasp how fucked she was she couldn't if that was me i'd be like raw i'm i'm fucked here but she was like cool as a cucumber she was cool she was like yeah i can do a headstand right here I can, I can lean on my chair like these, I can sing, I can laugh to myself sinisterly, like she was going through it bro. Now in the second interrogation, they, the detective that interviewed her the first time, he wasn't there and it was another woman and they basically tried to do some good cop, bad cop. So the woman was basically there for like two hours basically accusing Jody and basically like there's all this pressure that she was building up until the point that Jody wanted to see the other detective and then hopefully then that would help her divulge more information so I guess it worked right you if you haven't seen the four um inter not the four interrogations but the interrogations edited in a way that only the relevant stuff are present then you should go see them after this video they are absolutely fascinating to watch but once the other detective comes in you'd think that she'd start to own up and be like you know what i f***ed up I, I did this i was wrong i was in the wrong i killed him cool nope so after denying that you were there even though there's dna and pictures of proof that you were there and that didn't work she now goes on to make a brand new narrative and a brand new story of what happened and before she did this she was basically asking the detective please can you show me those two accidentally deleted pictures again i want to see the pictures that were accidentally deleted and it can only be assumed that she wanted to either confirm something in the picture or use the picture to make up a narrative that would make sense to what she was about to say this girl goes on a rant for like 40 45 minutes of how Travis was attacked by two masked assailants one man one woman after she took that last picture of Travis all she heard was a ring ring ping you know like that ring sound and 
and she woke up and Travis was already stabbed and and for some reason right the the, the mask assailants killed Travis I guess Travis was in some sort of beef with the mafia or something right because they killed him viciously brutally shot him in his face slit his throat stabbed him 27 times and did nothing to Jody literally not one ounce of what she said made sense with the evidence that was collected at all the detective even let her go on this rant because it could be actually used against her in court and it was of course it was and then after the 45 minute spiel he was like i don't believe you literally as plain as that this detective was on no bs and i liked him i don't believe you i don't believe what you're telling me like i don't believe you i guess that still didn't work because after this interrogation was over we follow on to court proceedings she's charged with first degree murder the whole shebang i don't know why in america this happens a lot but why was jody um interviewed by fox why was a criminal interviewed by tv like what is the purpose of that shouldn't you be interviewed afterwards if you were found innocent why was she interviewed she she, she did she did so many interviews for so long oh yeah like i'm one of the interesting things about criminals that do things that do bad things and then they try to act innocent you try to act in a way that you don't feel do you see what i'm saying you're trying to act innocent you're trying to act like you're sad you're trying to act like you're in pain you're trying to act like you're unbothered the weird thing is though it, it will never ever match the the scenario that you're in let's assume this girl was innocent right she decided to go with the happy-go-lucky girl next door church girl facade oh i'm just some innocent girl what did you do I, I don't know anything i don't know what's going on if you were actually innocent but you were in in court on trial for the murder first degree of your ex-boyfriend and you were actually innocent in what world would you be acting like this but in her head this is the best way she knows how to act innocent do you see what i'm saying so it's like an empath like it doesn't it doesn't match and it gets really weird to observe especially with the context i can't bring up everything that actually happened in the court proceedings long story short yes she was found guilty like the jury didn't believe what she came up with but what she came up with was actually a different story at first she said i wasn't there then she said okay i was there but i didn't kill him two masked assailants killed him random people out of nowhere but then when it came to court i guess her, her legal team was like yeah that's not really gonna run we have to so they can place you at the scene so you have to be there but we're gonna say you killed him but you killed him in self-defense we're gonna paint travis to be a monster they tried to paint him as a pedophile uh, uh, an abuser all of these bad things which is kind of it's so crazy to me bro honestly and then we're gonna say yeah you killed him but i was in self-defense Bro, when I tell you the story that they tried to come up with was she drops the camera and Travis becomes angry because his brand new camera falls on the ground. And then I guess he steps out. The, so he's seated. He gets up, steps out of the shower, right? Body slams her like he picks her up and body slams her. In which case, bear in mind, getting body slammed onto tiles or any hard surface is crazy especially if you're 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 not you're not really prepared for it like even in court she said when he body slammed me i was winded but at the same time she had all this energy and all of this ability to run through like she ran to the room she ran into the closet apparently he was running after her too and uh she she grabs a gun that i guess she brought to travis's house because otherwise where else how else would she know that there was a gun there she grabs a gun she runs back out of the play 
face. He's lunging at her in this in this pose. He, all of these things I'm saying, you have to actually watch the um, the trials to see what I'm talking about. You don't have to watch the full trials. Like there's, it's pretty much condensed into like watchable forms. Like other people have done this. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. But I actually found the trials and I watched them because I was really invested. So Travis is lunging at her like these. And that's when she shoots him in his face. And uh, all of a sudden, like, I guess when you get shot in your face, yeah, in your face right here, you get shot in your face, like, you can walk it off. I guess Travis was like Wolverine, like he was the Hulk. He walked it off, he, he got shot in his face, and he was like, damn, I guess that got him more angry at Jody. And this is where, in Jody's testimony, her mind completely goes blank very very convenient right like you remember everything up until like it starts to get really weird and it starts to not make much sense and how you got this knife and why you stabbed him so many times and slit his throat and did all these things to him right why you didn't report this self-defense to the police and all these really weird things it gets really hazy and now she can't remember anything and they're asking her oh, i don't remember literally from here on out it was so traumatic to me that i can't remember nothing bear in mind guys that every single thing i've said up until this point from the moment that i started with she drops the camera and then he gets up angry it's all cap none of this happened the the prosecutor he spent many days proving that this theory didn't happen and he proved that it was dumb because it wouldn't make any sense um some people some experts came in and they actually determined that travis was in all likeliness shot likelihood shot in his face last and his throat was slit last like those two things were it's one of the last things to happen to him because there was one picture anyway you you i don't want to get into too much too much too much detail on it because when you actually do the research you'll also be fascinated and amazed by this case apparently jody uh said that the reason she killed this guy and left him there is because she didn't want to report it to the police because if she did they would start asking questions and the questions would have led to the fact that travis was a pedophile bear in mind guys he's not he was never a pedophile the defense team painted him out to be this monster to, to basically prove that the self-defense was warranted but just hold on for a second so this guy's a pedophile and in your head you're like yo this guy likes kids pedophile what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep with him more because the more I sleep with him the more I might be able to cure him of his pedophile nature I kid you not that's exactly the mind state of Jody and that's what she said to the jury I kid you not the more I sleep the more I sleep with him he, the more he sleeps with a real woman hopefully this would cure him of his pedophile nature I guess him being a pedophile didn't make you fall out of love for him or didn't make you want to call the police or none of this it just made you want to sleep with him more yeah travis let's let's go but what i was talking about earlier when i said that the fact that she moved two blocks away from him you know people are pretty capable of doing heinous shit like people have the capacity and people have the capability to do heinous shit and more time not all the time but more time you can always tell the telltale signs before something goes wrong if if you're capable of doing something as crazy as after we break up with each other and i don't want to be with you and i'm and i've told you this i've verbalized this you you would you would literally get up and shift your whole life pretty much to my doorstep and then start to come over all the time unannounced you're crazy the fact that you would do that something so irrational in my head would also mean that you're capable now of doing something irrational to me afterwards 
let's say I I I start being with another girl or whatever the case of course you're now capable of killing me maybe even hurting the girl that I'm seeing or maybe just killing me because you're capable of doing something so irrational as picking up your entire life and dropping it at my do you see what I'm saying like a lot of the time the telltale signs are there to be seen fam this woman kills a guy and then oh one more thing right this this was premeditated murder and the reason i know that is because this woman she she actually bought gas i guess she came from pasadena la right all the way to arizona where travis was she buys gas so she fills up her entire car and then fills up two canisters of empty canisters of gas at pasadena and i guess this was because she she didn't let's say she drove all the way to az of one tank of gas and then it emptied she didn't want to be seen in arizona filling up gas because she didn't want to be seen in there like she didn't want I guess even if they had cameras she didn't want proof that she was there basically so she filled up and got extra gas from LA then went to AZ and then she was like yeah 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 uh, I'm gonna have sex with him real quick kill him and then I'm out of it and there's gonna be no proof premeditated the way Jody was answering these questions in court oh my god I wanted to Oh my god it's so it's so it's so infuriating bro i wanted to get my laptop and literally like crush it between my hands like a hydraulic press and then throw it in the tightest spiral you've ever seen at the wall and watch it shatter bro then i wanted to take off my do-rag and shove it up someone's asshole i swear to god bro her testimony when when they're talking about Travis was the worst oh my god like I'm I'm remembering it right now and I'm my blood is boiling fam but anyway long story short uh, it was proven that she was guilty of first degree she's she's currently serving life in jail to this day she 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 claims her innocence oh like Travis was a you know Travis's family was at this this court hearing for the two months you know um, I, might act, I might actually talk about this in the next true crime video because I think this is like way too long I had no idea I was gonna go for this long I thought I was gonna sit here for 20 minutes and talk about this but I'm looking at the, the time right now it's at 50 minutes this video is not gonna be 50 minutes because I'm gonna edit it down but yeah this is a pretty long video so i'll probably talk about this in the next video in fact you know i'm gonna write it down too so i don't forget but anyway yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video right and you should watch at least the jcs criminal psychology video on jody it's called wrath of jody it has like 34 million views something like that either 17 or 34 million views so it's a pretty big story and if you're really interested watch the trial man the trial the interrogation is one thing and that's pretty fascinating but the trial oh my days crazy anyway i hope you guys had a good time there's gonna be way more of these and if you really enjoyed this too then smash the like button like i said and listen keep crazy bitches out of your life crazy males crazy females whatever you're into keep them far away from you if they're capable of being crazy and doing irrational things they're also capable of killing you i swear to god